Uh, what, what is she? Welcome you want to, to stay for a few minutes this edition of Brown Panel Discussion. You know who I am. This is Dave Wainscott. Are you on crack? Pastor, Third Day Fresno. There's the a reason that I ask him if he's on crack, <laughs> and we'll talk about it later. Go ahead and finish your sentence, bro. Uh, I, 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 I say he's the man who ruined me for the mainstream American church experience, and I thank him for it. If you want to know what that is, email me or call me, and I'll explain it. Well, I think we'll kind of talk about it right now. What we're going to do on this episode is, is talk about music, and specifically want to talk about the Gaithers and crack. Uh, you may remember this story, Ken. <laughs> Uh, we have a tradition at our church called the Love Feast, and one morning a blessed sister. Well, now, now you may want you may want to embellish what is the Love Feast, so uh, they don't think we're you know at the Burning Man festival or something. Well, we did burn a man once at the Love Feast. It was not pretty, but you know, the Love Feast. I was about to do that. I was about to to uh, preface the statement about the Love Feast, explaining what the heck it is. There was a tradition in the early church, by that I don't mean the early service, the 830 service, I mean the ancient church, the early Christian church. You know, for what we usually call communion, they got together and they had a whole meal. They had a feast, they hung out, they talked, they had a complete meal, and it was really cool. So we tried to do our best and recreate it. We did it at a restaurant, and we would just all hang out, no agenda for teaching, just eat, have fun, maybe pray and catch up and have a spiritaneous conversation. Everybody be off to work. It'd be breakfast time. So we're hanging out one time. This is before you came on board. A bunch of us were hanging out. And uh, Lucy, who's watching right now, and she's a big fan of KRDU. She's, list she's not only listening to KRDU right now, she's watching this video. She's just that much of one of your fans. <laughs> but the catch is Lucy likes the, uh, the Gaithers. I found a Gaither vocal band CD here in the, in the station. And she's very much a fan of the Gaithers. And they're wonderful men and women of God. You've got to know that. I mean, good grief. They're just awesome people. Uh, their music stinks. No, I mean, <laughs> I mean, their music is not my preference, which is really the point today. So here's Lucy. Direct those cards and letters to kru1130.com. I love the Gaithers, and I love their music less than I love them. That's all I'm saying. And that's really the point today, all right? <laughs> We're at the Love Feast, and Lucy is a Gaither fan, and she's decided after a few years, she's discerned that hardly anyone else in the church is. We're just kind of on a different page and vibe with our, you know, our musical preferences, and that's not a problem, which is the point. Hang on to the point. And uh, then she sees her brother walk in who's a musician, professional musician, and she <coughs> figures, well, finally I can get someone to at least admit, admit the Gaithers make good music, right? So he walks in, and she goes, you know, John, what do you think about the Gaithers? And I'll never forget, he, he strokes his beard pensively and he says, you know, I've seen him on TV and it's kind of like being on crack. And Lucy, as she'll tell you, was very offended, but he didn't mean it as an offense. I knew exactly what he meant and he explained it this way. He said, you know, that whole experience of the Gaithers, their, their music, their style, their hair, the way they sit around on the couches, that whole experience is just so foreign to him that the only analogy he had for it was being on crack and, and being in a whole different world. Not a bad trip necessarily, just that it was a cross-cultural experience from his musical taste. And so this created this image, this metaphor in our church, if you will, of the Gaithers on crack. <laughs> and when you, how many of you know, you know this, people have musical preferences and God uses that musical preference in you. What is your favorite musical style or genre, Ken, through whom God has ministered to you? I mean, that's obvious, what is it? Uh, heavy metal. Heavy metal, yes, yes. Death metal. Death metal. You heard it here first. Uh, I think he's kidding. Celtic Christian. He wouldn't even be alive without Celtic Christian. God used Celtic Christian to save his life, uh, to save his body, and to minister to him, and it works on, on a daily basis. It blesses you, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. That's pretty much all I listen to. All right. And my favorite band, as you might guess, is the world's best band. I mean, it's just obvious. Everybody knows that U2 is the best band in the world. I even have an antique cassette right here. Now that is a band that God has used in my life ever since I've been a Christian, I mean for decades, every day, to bless me. Now, now I, can, I can hear the questions right now. I'll, I'll let you continue with that thought, but I, I can hear some people out there thinking right now, wait a minute, U2, that's that Bono guy, and he uses dirty language at award ceremonies, so he can't possibly be a Christian. Well, the same is true for the Gaithers, I'm sure not. 
And that's the difference, because we're talking about culture today. So, yeah, he has been known to use a few colorful words, uh, just the like F Vincent bomb. J. Vera never does. Uh, I want to bring Vincent into this conversation. Vincent? So we can make it a full-blown debate on this point. You haven't gone out for your chimichanga yeah. yet, have you? No. All right, well, come on over. Come on over. Starving, we want to talk about this. We want to get in a, in a trialogue oh, man. Or, or a debate or a war or a, whatever you want to call it. You know, I, I love you too. God uses them. All members of the band are officially Christian, and partly because they're from Ireland, and partly because they're a little raw, they sometimes use colorful language. Which, which again, is a cultural thing. Again, being, a cultural thing. Being connected with people in England and Ireland, to them, certain words that are horrible curse words in America are just not that big a deal over there. So sometimes it is a cultural difference. It absolutely is. And that's our topic, I think, today. This is a spiritaneous video. We didn't plan this at all. But I think the topic is go. the Gaithers on crack is a perfect <laughs> image, if you will, for cultural differences and preferences. God uses you 2 in my life every day. God uses Celtic music in Ken's life every day. And that's not wrong. That's just different. Here's a question I often use in my classes. I say, just fill in the blank with your gut instinct. In England, they drive on the blank side of the road. What's your gut instinct to that question? In England, they drive on the what side of the road? Right. And that is the right answer, Ken, or the wrong answer? Uh, yes. It's actually the right side because they drive on the left side of the yeah. road in England, which is the right side for them. Yeah, the left side now is the right side. Now check this out. You are brilliant, dude. <laughs> Let me tell you, you're brilliant because one out of ten American Christians answers the wrong answer. They say, in England, they drive on the wrong side of the road. Well, it's not the wrong side of the road for them. Yeah. It'd be wrong for them to drive on the wrong side of the road. Which is the right side of the road in America. <laughs> yeah. The right side is the wrong side See, over here. That's not to say there's no absolute truth. There absolutely is. It's just to say that some things are cultural, some things are preference, and some things are right for you and not for someone else. We're not talking doctrine. We're talking things like music style. So what we can do is have here a big debate because it's easy for me to actually honestly say, and I mean this with all due respect, I can't even relate to getting blessed by the Gaither music. <laughs> I love those guys. They probably love Jesus and serve Jesus more than I do, but I get absolutely nothing out of it. But that doesn't mean it's wrong for someone else to get something out of it. That is so awesome and beautiful, even though I don't get it. Ken thinks the same about my favorite group. I can get blessed all day by you too, and he'll go, "What in yeah, the world I, is that?" I know they must. They do do some good stuff, but it's like it just it just doesn't connect with me. Or another five favorite of yours, Violet Burning. It's like if you don't get anything out of the Violet Burning, you are obviously not saved. <laughs> <laughs> now I just brought in a few cassettes. Now I have CDs at home. I have MP3s on my computer. I even have this high tech phone where I have all kind of digital music, so I've got <laughs> tons and tons of music on there. So is, that don't think... the, is that one of those shaver phones? Yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it is. But here are some cassettes. I have an antique car, and so they have an antique mode of, of music. I have Sam Phillips, as you can see by the sticker, bought at Berean on the discount rack because she used to be in the Christian music industry, and she left. She was known as Leslie Phillips back then. She was known as Leslie Phillips back then. Many of our listeners know her. I've got, of course, the obligatory U2 CD. <laughs> I have Pete Same. Townsend of The Who no and way. Roddy Lane. No way Pete Townsend. No, those, yes, I know. Those he, are pagans. I know he worships the guru and all that crap, but I'm <laughs> telling you, there are some anointed songs on here that are not perfect but are beautiful and spiritual. Oh, my. Let me tell you about that. Well, who's going to argue with this? I have the master. I have Keith Green. Okay? You want to argue with Keith, Keith Green? Keith Green, okay. You I'll, think he wasn't saved? I'll give you that. I'll you give, give me you that. that. I even have a Celtic tape by Iona. I don't know. But now, now you're talking. Yeah, from now the Boston talking. Celtics. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, my goodness. What else do I have? This is just random what I brought in a handful. Michael Knott. I don't even have the cover. That's how well-worn and used this cassette is, is. Is he part of the family of Knott's Berry Farm? Michael Knott. No, he's a Christian, and he sometimes uses colorful language. Oh, no. Radio ahead. Any questions? <laughs> now, God uses that stuff all the way down here to care to you. I was listening to that stuff, and it just blessed my socks off. and made me love Jesus more. Some people can't understand that. They think I'm unsaved, pre-saved, or whatever the heck it is. But I'm telling you, sometimes it's just style, cultural preference. 15 seconds. 15 seconds. Time for a debate. Challenge him on his music. What do you like to listen to, dude? The Beatles. What does he like to listen to? 
Celtic music. Do you get anything out of it, or is it be like being on crack to you? It's 